to my presentation on the pentagram. I'm um, happy to be back for a second year in a row. I'm surprised I got invited back, to be fair. But yeah, the team uh, had a huge achievement last year. We managed to put off a formation um, that's never been done before. It's, of course, a world first. Two seconds, my clicker isn't working. Okay, so before we get into it, I'm just going to introduce myself for those of you that don't know me. Uh, I'm Lance Corporal Cameron Clark, and I've been in the Army for 12 years now. Six of those years, I've been on the Red Devils. It's an absolute grafter of a career. And my current jobs on the team are Chief Rigger and Stack Pilot. So when we're not doing displays, me and two other guys are in charge of all the equipment, and we also build all the ancillaries that the team uses. And then on displays and training, I'm in charge of all the crew formations. Question which everyone loves at the AGM, which I really hate, is how many jumps do you have? Just over 2,100. But to put a bit of context to that, I've got over 1,500 crew jumps, okay? So ask me anything about crew, I'm quite knowledgeable. Anything else, don't come to me. I don't have not a, lot, not a lot of knowledge on anything else. So of course, I'm part of the Red Devils. And if you see my presentation last year, it was all on the history of the Red Devils and what we do. We're just gonna do a brief, brief introduction here so everyone uh, knows, yeah. So in 1964, um, we were formed by the late Lieutenant Colonel Ed Gardner. We are the Army's official parachute display team. And we currently have 14 members. Um, a couple of years ago, the team was as strong as 30 at one point, but now with cuts and how the army's going, we're down to 14. However, we do still provide the same role that the team did before. During the year, we conduct between 40 to 60 displays. This year, that is looking at going up quite a lot. I believe this year we're probably going to hit more like 70, 80. And we conduct around 350 tandems a year as well. For those of you that work at Go Skydive or any other uh, parachute centre, probably think that's not a lot. But for a team of 14 who are looking after all the equipment, sorting out all the dis displays, and then any free day we've got doing tandems, that's actually quite a lot. The most important thing, we're all still serving soldiers. So if at any point our battalions need us back, we drop everything on the Red Devils and we have to go back to our regular duties. So next slide is just going to be uh, our team film from last year. And this gives everyone an idea um, of what we get up to throughout the year.
terrible job, right? If someone has to do it, I'll do it. So hopefully we're all here to learn more about the, the pentagram which we achieved last year. So we're going to just break this down into a few headings today. The first thing we're going to cover is the idea. Where did the idea actually come from? The rigging that went into, as you can see in the center, the rigging that went into the probes to create the pentagram. The ground trial, so everything we done on the ground before we actually got up into the air. The training plan, quite simple, the jumps we done leading up to the pentagram. And of course, the execution. When, where did it happen and when did it happen? But first, we're just going to cover some formations the team already does. So we have our stacks, our three stacks, our five stacks, leading all the way up to our ten stacks. I'm fully aware the Marines still hold, hold the title of the largest stack. I believe it's 20 something. And I don't think it's going to be beaten anytime soon. And of course, we have our other formations, which we call our Canty and our Diamond. For those of you that do crew, you'll notice on our Diamonds, we use a probe in the center guy. So we now refer to, refer to this as the Demo Diamond. And you can see we have lots of ancillaries as well. So we have our large flags, our chain of smokes, and we have streamers and all sorts of other pieces of kit. And we have our downplane variations. So we have our downplane with our flags, and we have our downplane with our chain of smoke, which was previously, previously known as the chain of death. But we can't call it that anymore. And we have our larger formations like our kites, and I often refer to them if they don't have a name as our Frankenstein formations. But moving closer to the pentagram, so the formations are starting to look more like the pentagram now. We have our by hand down plane and our tribal side down plane. Okay? The team's been doing these formations for years. And, uh, We've got so good at this formation that we can get and take them into our smallest arenas now, which is 100 by 50. We do these quite a lot in central London. And as you would have seen on the videos, we also perform these at night. But uh, the closest formation we have is actually the quad. But the problem, well, the thing you can see the resemblance in all these formations is we're attached by the hip ring to, an to another jumper. And the issue we're having with the quad is the transition period. It was, um, it's very hard to get right and we had a lot of wraps. So when I joined the team, it hadn't been completed for eight years. And ever since I joined the crew team, it was something I really wanted to bring back or at least be part of once to see what the issue was. So we looked into doing the quad and the only video we could actually find on the quad at that time was the video I'm about to show you. So yeah, the only video I had to refer to was actually a rap. The only, um, the only things I could find on the quad working was photos, and that was quite obviously because it very rarely worked. So when I've become stack pilot, this is something we work towards. I um, had to call previous team members who are on the team and had been on a successful quad to find out the lengths of probes, how they'd done it, did they want the wing load in on the center guys or on the outside guys. So it took a while to gain all this information. So after a while, we gained this information and we set about attempting the quad. I don't know how, but on the first attempt, we got it. And then last year in America, we pushed it a step further. We wanted to do the quad, but this time have four flags on it. We'd only ever seen the quad with two flags. So we wanted to take it that step further and we had four flags. So here's the video from that, from my own perspective.
main point to note on this video is if you look when we're getting our probes out is the oscillation that was happening through the stack. The oscillation is where the canopies are wiggling. And this was due to the wing loading. We needed heavier guys on the top and on the bottom. And that was due, and that was for when the quad is out in its final form. So it is a long video, but I wanted to everyone to see how hard it actually is to get this quad together. Yeah, let calm, let calm, let calm. Okay, cutting, So on the quad, we used to probe up the bottom two guys first. Two guys at the top, the second, and the centre guys would probe up last, and that's because this is the most dangerous stage of the quad. So yeah, we managed to pull the quad off. We wanted to take it a step further. I know that, and although this may seem easy, we wanted to put four flags on this. But what it required is the two outer guys to take their hands out of their toggles to get their flags out. The problem is, when we're in the quad, the outer guys have to have input the whole way through the formation. They have to be put on their outside toggle the whole time. As you can see, there's no, there's no time to relax on that quad. Everyone's putting in input at some point, trying to keep it flying. I think everyone was very relieved at that stage. So what we do now, after a new formation we've successfully pulled off, is we do an after action review. And I'm sure everyone does this after a jump, you all get together, you watch the video and you discuss what's happened and what was bad and what was good. What we now do is we put this onto paper or onto the computer and we save it in a file. And that is to avoid the problem I had when I was trying to achieve the quad, is that it, it, wasn't, document, it wasn't documented anywhere. I had to actively go and seek that information out. But within the team now, we document everything. So when the future guys of the team can refer back to what we were doing now. <coughs> so on the after action review, we came up with, to pull this formation off, you need four very experienced crew jumpers. You need four current crew jumpers, and currency and experience are two very different things. We've got very experienced guys on the team. However, they haven't done crew in about two years. I will always take currency over experience. We identified that the compression stage is a high risk stage. So if any formation we do now, we always identify the high risk stage. We identified we wanted the heavier wing loading on the outside edge. And like I said, when we was in the stack, that wasn't helpful to us. But once the, once the quad is flying, that's it. we need them on the outside as it's the most helpful. Stack pilot in number three slot. I know there's going to be people out there that say, why are you not using comms? We had a pros and, con, pros and cons for comms. That was a mouthful. But we established for this particular formation, the cons outweighed the pros with the uh, headsets. Out flags need to be deployed first. And that's because the guys need to take their hands out of the toggles. If they can't get their flags out, then it's not going to work. We'll just stop, stop, stop the formation there. And that's the main one we established, this wasn't suitable for displays. And the reason for that is the high risk that it could end up in a wrap or we're not gonna pull it off. If we put anything onto a display, it has to be at least, it has to be around a 99% chance we're gonna pull the formation off. 
And this is where the idea kind of started. Once I pulled this formation off, obviously it looked a bit dodgy in the video, but as soon as we got out, I said, has anyone tried to add a fifth person onto that? Obviously I got a lot of strange looks, and there was a couple of guys on the team that were fully on board at that point. But yeah, we established, it wasn't impossible, but it would require a lot of training to progress this particular way of doing the quad to a five by side, which we were gonna call it at the time. So, moving on to the pentagram. To gonna, the next slide is actually just raw footage of some of the guys' perspective of the pentagram. Let's just give everyone an idea when I move on to parts about the pentagram, what's actually going on. Could have hyped these clips up and put epic music over them, but I think with the sound from the cameras, you can truly appreciate what was going on. Look at Steve on the right hand side of this, he gets thrown around quite a lot, it's quite funny. <laughs> That's a pentagram in its raw form. <laughs> My favourite part of that video is Max when he splits off, shouts yes. He's either very happy to be off the formation or very happy that we actually pulled it off. So, going back to where the second part of the idea come from. So previous to this, we were doing the quad, attaching ourselves on the hip, um, as you've seen in the video. So May 2023, a friend of mine come down, he wanted to achieve his crew coach rating. So on a day off, I was more than happy to do this. So we come down, we enjoyed some jumping together, and we managed to achieve his crew coach. After that, I wanted to do, introduce him to the way we done a tri beside. But while doing that, he, uh, sorry, I wanted to introduce him to a tri beside and then he wanted to introduce me to how he does a tribe side. I didn't know there was another way of doing a tribe side out there. I thought we were the only people doing it and other display teams. However, there is other people out there attempting this stuff too. So as you can see there, I was more than happy to attempt the way John done a tribe side, but I don't know if I look happy about it there. So once again, save my boring voice as a video of what we got up to on that last jump and how this new tribicide was put together. So it worked in the same way. We built the three stack as normal. The main difference on this was the probes and how the probes worked and obviously the transition. Yeah. Fairly happy with myself.
So that was what we got up to that day. And that opened my mind up to a new way of doing a driver side. So obviously that was a new formation to uh, us guys on the Red Devils. So I was gonna stick to what I said and we're having an after action review. On the after action review, we come up with that you need two experienced crew jumpers on there. Some people might be looking at me a bit funny, there's three jumpers on there. I would be more than happy to take one other experienced Red Devil and one of the newer Red Devils. What I mean by newer Red Devils is a guy that was on about 20 crew jumps, I'd be more than happy to take them on that formation with the right training, of course. Three current crew jumpers, however. Currency, I think, is key. Stack Pilot has to be in number two slot for communication. It's a very stable formation throughout. So once again, all of these notes are for if anybody on our team wants to refer back to what we're trying, they can get some key points. The transition is a high risk stage. And I don't think it was necessarily a high risk stage. I think I just identified it as that, as I wasn't used to it. It was a new way of transitioning for me. So I, it was a high risk stage to me and the Red Devils. Suitable for displays with stack pilot training. I think we could take this into a display quite easily. However, once we're in the down plane, it is no longer steerable. In the way we traditionally do a driver side, the driver side is still steerable. We can steer that into the arena. So with some stack pilot training, as long as we transition this in the right area, we should be able to split over the arena and all land in safely. And we established this was very easy to progress to a four, and everyone agreed that. However, this was where the idea for the pentagram was born. I sat there and said, well, why not do five? And some people looked at me like I was insane, but I think the majority of us on the Red Devils are a little bit insane. So there was definitely some people that agreed with me. But the main problem I had was I had this vision in my head, and some other people shared the vision. How do you get a, a vision that I fully understand across to a bunch of guys that are looking at me as if I'm speaking a different language? So I used whatever I could and I came up with this. It was a silly little app on my phone that was able to draw the formation and they could visibly see what I was trying to achieve. I don't think that would convince a lot of people out there to go and try what we just tried. <laughs> However, it was enough to get the guys on the team on board. So we set everything into motion. The first thing we had to tackle was, of course, the rigging. And the Red Devil's rig room works like any other rigging room. We look after the, the canopies. We do line sets, reserve repacks. However, we work on some abnormal pieces of kit as well. Everyone's seen our big flags, and we have uh, various types of probes. And we have our chain of smokes. We have lots of different ancillaries. And all of our ancillaries are built within house. They're built within house, tested within house, all by Red Devils riggers. So tackling a new set of probes, it wasn't anything new to us. But the probe, when I refer to probes, by the way, some people refer to them as straps as well. Um, but whenever I'd seen probes and straps, I'd always seen them with a metal three ring release system. Okay, we all understand the metal three ring release system in skydiving, and we all trust the three ring release system. So this is what we've been working off for probes um, up, to this, up to this point. But with probes, there is good sets out there, and there is really bad sets out there. Um, this is a range I've seen. Our probes are in the center, and I will not comment on the other probes. But John introduced me to the probes he had, and this was how he managed to do the triber side in the, new, in the new way. But the one thing that really stuck out to me was it was using a Dacron release system. I really didn't like the look of it, however, I allowed John to explain. I seen some videos of them working and we done our ground trials. So we went up and we tried them with the Dacron release system. And that video you've seen prior, they worked. They were absolutely fine. I've only added this point in because it makes sense on our ground trials. So the rigging was done. I'd built five probes with the Dacron release system 
and we were ready to head into ground trials. So on the ground trials, we had all members of the, anybody that was flying camera on the final jump was part of any ground trials. And that's so they could see everything and know everything that was going to happen. Obviously, we had a new set of probes and straps. So we had to do an introduction to these and we had to talk through any issues they may have. And also how they're packed away for the jump. There's a lot of crew teams out there that jump with their probes already attached. Us as a team, we keep them in a bag, which is called a probe bag. And that's simply, if there's any wraps and entanglements along the way, the probe isn't going to be an issue. We only pull out the probe if we intend on using it. We went through simple things like the in-planing order, the exit order, the build. Okay, there was nothing different. We've built five stacks all the time. But you see, these two stages are highlighted. The compression and the probing up stage and the transition. So this whole ground trial, so I think we spent three days on these, probably six hours a day. And the compression stage and the transition stage was the main part we spoke about. And it was everyone that was on the jump, along with the camera team, anybody that wanted to be there. And we simply would have all of our kit on, we'd attach the probes, we'd walk through the transition, and we'd talk about what each individual thinks is going to happen. And I make a point of when we're doing these ground trials, that it can sometimes be just the experienced guys talking. But I always let the, the more junior guys talk as well because they look at things in a different way <coughs> that I found experienced guys don't necessarily notice. So we talked about this for hours, there was a lot of arguments. And then we moved on to the position over the DZ and the spot and the split and altitudes. And you'll see in brackets it says stop, stop, stop. At this particular point, so we'd walked through the um, the pentagram on the ground about five, six times, absolutely fine. On about the sixth, seventh time, we had an issue where the probes didn't split. Okay, they pulled the release handles and the probes didn't split. So we put the probes back together, hoping that they'd just been put together wrong. It was fine for another couple of jumps. And then once again, we had an issue where it didn't split. So we put a complete stop to this and we had to go back to the rigging stage. So we took them into uh, the rigger down at Neverhaven. Obviously, I'm a rigger myself. So there was four riggers all around the table looking at these probes. And the quickest and easiest way we could do to rectify this was move away from the Dacron release system that John had on his probes and was go back to what we know, which was the three ring release system. So we simply went back to the metal work and is what, on, um, is what I've seen on every other probe out there. So that was the only real issue we had with, with the rigging, is that we built a complete set of probes, and then we had to bin them, well, break them up and use the parts and build a completely new set. But during these ground trials, the main points we had to cover was actions on. So we had actions on wraps and entanglements, like you do with any crew jump you go on. We had actions on probe malfunctions, um, the, sim the actions on for this, if someone had a probe malfunction, everybody else was to split and leave them with the rest of the probes. If there was more than one pro mal probe malfunction, we identified points on the probes that could quite easily be cut through. So the jumper on crew, you carry two knives, they could quite easily cut through the probes and get rid of them. We can quite easily replace the probes on the ground. And the last one was an unconscious jumper. And that was because of the transition, being quite a fast and aggressive transition, was there was a slim chance we could have an unconscious jumper. So we had several drills for that also. The next part we moved on to was the training plan. Okay, and I'm not gonna go through all that, but it was as simple as that. We started on the tribal sides, getting every guy through the tribal side, and we moved on to the quad, and eventually onto the pentagram. You see, we started with the camera, no camera on the first jump, and slowly built it up. This was just less people in the sky, there was less to worry about. But point to note is after every jump and before every jump, which you should do, talk through the jump, we talked about the actions on, okay? Actions on anything going wrong. And we had an after action review after every jump, okay? Even if you <coughs> wasn't on a jump, I wanted you to learn something from the previous jump. 
And the next slide is, once again, some raw footage of the first attempt of the quad in the new way we was going to do it. Yeah, there's just some raw footage of the, the quad with the new way of transitioning. If you can see from that video, it was a lot calmer than the old way we used to do the quad. Or, yeah, the old way we used to do the quad. The first time we'd done this, I was surprised how easy it was, and I thought the pent pentagram was going to be super easy. However, it did provide a little bit of challenges. So we'd completed the quad, and the next jump was the pentagram. So all the training jumps we managed to achieve at the, um, the Army Championships down at Neverhaven. And the time it comes to attempting the pentagram, it was in the evening on the Thursday. And we went up and we, uh, we pulled off the pentagram. But we didn't want it to just be there. We wanted people to be there to witness it the first time we'd done it. So the next day, uh, Neverhaven asked if we'd do it on the prize giving. And of course, only to make it a little bit more harder for ourselves, put more pressure on ourselves, we said yes, of course. So yeah, the first time we'd done it was um, the prize giving at the, National, at the Neverhaven Army Championships. And this is what the guys got from that jump. And this is the edit they come up with. So that was a pentagram. After that jump, we're all extremely excited and, well, we pulled it off. It was a lot of work. It was about two to three months of <coughs> constantly working on this while doing demos and tandems and stuff as well. But we had to stick to our word and after action review. So on this, five experienced, five current jumpers. We had our high risk stage in there and our over rotation on the transition to be drilled and trained because that was the most dangerous part. And there was various other bits in there. So this we're now going to an archive and that is in a couple of years time, if me or anyone that was on the pentagram leaves a team, if they ever want to try this um, formation again, there's something to uh, go back to instead of calling me up when I'm hopefully retired by then. So, but the last point on there was progressions possible. Once we pulled this formation off, I looked at it and I can see a lot more we can do with it. And that's not just adding people, but there is a lot more we could do this formation. So if you remember back to the first slide when I introduced the Red Devils, uh, we were formed in 1964. Anyone that's got quick maths, you'll realise it's our 60th anniversary <coughs> this year. So for our 60th anniversary, we really want to highlight the team's history and also we want to put a stamp on this year like we did last year. So there's a sh short clip after this and hopefully this will give you an idea of what we're going to attempt. And we're throwing it out there because I very rarely see people 
tell you what they're going to attempt out there on social media. It's all what we've achieved and not what we're trying because we're all scared of failure. So we're going to put it out there and even if we fail, you'll know what we were attempting to achieve. I hope that was very clear what we're going to try, which we're going to attempt. But yeah, we're going to attempt the hex. So six people, uh, one person to represent each decade of the team. But as you envision the pentagram up there, it's going to look slightly different. But that is the only piece of information I'm going to give you. If you follow our social medias, we're slowly going to be releasing parts of the hex throughout the year. But yeah, I hope everyone enjoyed some of the videos and my boring voice, but does anyone have any questions? Yes, I think we have a microphone. Is there any other Red Devils in here? Yeah. Well done, Max. It's just so it's on the film and everyone can hear as well. So if you just run it, someone who's got a question, please, mate. Hi, man. Thanks for the talk. Um, I'm just curious, what altitudes were you when you all joined up in the stack? And then when the actual pentagram, um, or pentagram, sorry, was together, what altitude were you? Yeah, good question. So we exited the plane at the top. So we got out at 15,000 feet. Um, I believe we built in the five stack and probed up around 8,000, 8, 9,000 feet. That's when we transitioned into the, into the pentagram. And everyone had set um, heights to cut away from the formation, not cut away the canopies, cut away from their formation, but everyone had set heights and mine was the last height and I was at about a thousand feet. Yeah. I thought that was quite high. <laughs> Anybody else got a question? Uh, so as a follow-up question then, if you are cutting away at 1,000 feet, or cutting away from the formation at 1,000 feet, um, at what speed are you descending in that formation? Yeah, so I shouldn't have used the word cutaway, I should have used the word split, so I'll correct myself there. But yeah, uh, we actually had a fly sight on this particular formation, that was downplaying it at 56 miles an hour. Um, I haven't had a fly sight on the new tribe side or the quad, which I really want to do, because I would think the larger the formation, the slower it would downplane. But however, that is something we want to 
look into. But yeah, 56 miles an hour for the pentagram. Oh, Max. Got to get running. Oh, there's one there, actually. And then we'll come around that side. Kudos to you guys for, the, uh, for this incredible um, CF stuff you're doing. Thank you. It is definitely uh, leading the way. And it's beautiful to see, especially on the social medias. I'm interested in your, from a camera flyer's point of view, having filmed a little bit of crew, um, with the down planes with flags, they go quick. Like from the transition into the down plane with the flag out. Um, I've filmed them on Velocities and Valkyries. What do your camera flyers use as canopies? Are they still team canopies? Uh, or do you get specialised canopies for them to film this sort of work? So yeah, all of our crew is obviously on the lightnings. Well, we use the lightnings. Um, and our camera guys are all on sabers, various sizes, but usually 120s to 135s. And that's because they need to be quite um, versatile. They need to be able to keep up with the slower formations and the faster formations. But yeah, they're flying sabers. And from, obviously I don't film camera myself, but I speak to them quite a lot. They seem to, the bigger the flag in the by hand down plane, the slower it actually downplanes. So, yeah, does that answer? Um, from the feedback from your camera flyers then, are they on the correct canopies for the, the faster, the pentagram and, and stuff like that? Or are they finding, because there's a lot of movement, a lot of spiraling, a lot of chasing uh, on those canopies, apart from leading up to make their canopy fly. You can't make your canopy descend quicker unless you're rotating, obviously. So are they, are they on the correct canopies or are they looking to change the canopies to something smaller and faster for specific formations? So we've, they're always talking about canopies, the camera guys. Uh, I'll stick to my trusty lightning. But um, yeah, so on that particular pentagram, I know that the camera guys did lead up a lot. I believe the guy that got the shots, with, which we all see, he had about 20 kilos of lead on just to keep up with the formation. So I think for that particular formation, he'd want a smaller canopy and a faster canopy. However, like I said, it's got to be versatile with our tribicides and the demos we're doing. Our main priority is demonstrations and not the videos we put out there. So everything's tailored around demonstrations, usually. I think it was one over that side, Max. Get there then. <laughs> Thank you. So the old style quad by side was obviously quite hard to fly because of the outside canopies needing to apply a toggle all the time. With the pentagram, once it was stable, was it completely hands off flying because it was all anchored centrally? Good question. With the new way they, uh, we transition with the pentagram, once that's out, and the canopies have all settled, flies itself. And you can take your hands off the toggles and there's no way you're gonna go. Because we're all equally, we're all attached in the center, the canopies just wanna fly away from each other and at an equal distance as well. So once it's transitioned, it's super stable and there's no input needed. And one next question. Do you feel it'd be possible with that setup to fly a five by side in a controllable manner or does that thing only want to downplane? So I've looked at the five by side before we had these probes. It kept me up at night. There were so many ways I was trying to do this five by side. And it's such a unpredictable formation, the quad, when, once you're in it, that I think it, that there's almost too much risk to, it would be great to do it, to achieve it. But once you've achieved it, there's nowhere else you could really go with it. It would just be achieving it. it would, we would never be able to put it on a demo. Uh, I'd be doing it for the sake of achieving it and that's it. Mm -hmm. which isn't a bad reason to do it. However, I want to take things a bit further. So yeah, we kind of stopped with that. I'm sure we'll go back to it at one point. Yeah. Perfect, thanks very much. No worries. Any other questions? What's the time? Got time for more questions, unless you're bored of my voice. I know I am. You know, if you're successful with the uh, Altingham. With the, 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 the Hex, yeah. Yeah. For the 70th anniversary, you're looking <laughs> to do the 70th. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't become a thing. We just keep adding more jumpers. Although I, I truly believe 
because the probes only ever get longer, this is as brave as the jumpers will get. I believe this, you could take this a lot further than six. But yeah, we're not just going to keep continuing it every <laughs> anniversary we get. No, oh. hopefully we come up with something new. Right. All right, I think that's it. Well, thank you everyone for coming and listening to the presentation.